This video is going to cover the secrets uh, around the 270-271 eligibility transaction and the 278-278 prior auth transaction. These are request and response transactions in the healthcare industry. The secret of these transactions is this. Um, they don't use them. Um, that's something that's, uh, it shouldn't be a mystery, but uh, there's a reason why I'm doing this video is because I'm here to um, really help folks out in, in what they're doing. And many times I get requests for, uh, to build these sort of transactions or to build applications around these type of transactions. Um, I had one case where someone asked me to build uh, or actually perform some EDSME work so that they could build 270, 271, and, and 278 transactions for eligibility and prior auth. And somewhere in the middle of the project, uh, they mentioned that they wanted to connect to a clearinghouse and the clearinghouse said, well, we're nationwide and 95% uh, of our clients don't use, uh, that means payers don't use uh, the 270 or 271 or 278. So just send us a flat file, or whatever you got, and we'll just map it and use it. So that didn't really make me look too good, you know, because I'd work with them to create these formats. And this is not the same as you will find in the other uh, potato, kind of like uh, steak and potato sort of, you know, uh, uh, transactions that you have, your main staples, you know, like the A37, A35, A34, those are very much implemented. But these specific transactions are not. And the reason why I mention that is really uh, just for clarity and also to make sure that um, I don't waste my time and that you don't waste your time developing something if, if that you don't need. So if you're working on one of those transactions, you should ask your payer, you know, how do you receive those? If they say, well, we don't take any of them, we use a clearinghouse service, then ask one of the dominant clearinghouse service services. And if they tell you uh, we don't use them, then there's your answer. And I think that's what you're gonna find with these because I've already done that sort of, of research. Um, nonetheless, I did have um, a Y2 client just this week that mentioned that they want to do the 278, and I told them exactly what I've mentioned here. Uh, many times they'll just take a flat file, you know, just give them a, a flat file of this information, and you'll have what you need. And um, they came back and said, no, actually what they want is a 278. So I built uh, a 278. And I'm going to go over that and, and some, I think, development uh, tricks I think might be useful. Uh, but just really fast, I'm going to quickly point out what I'm trying to show here in this video. Clearinghouses don't use, you know, the 270, 278 transactions like the other transactions. The clearinghouses usually will just take a flat file. The differences between the 270, 271, and, and uh, I have 178, but... Uh, this is a typo here. You know, what I actually mean here is, is 278. But um, the difference between these two is that the 270 and 271 is going to actually cover uh, details like um, your, your dates of coverage and maybe type of service that you're going to cover. Um, you see those also in the 834. Uh, but, you know, are you eligible for this coverage? And the 278 which is basically a request and response transaction. Uh, I mentioned this before. This is the only transaction where they use the same number. It's not 278, 279, it's 278, 278. These are both request response. But the 278 has the option where you can actually test a specific procedure code. If you're a provider and you, you don't want to perform a really expensive procedure without first finding out whether or not it's covered, then the 278 prior off uh, might be what you want to use. And that's, you know, what I was working on uh, this week. Um, for best practices, uh, I'm, if you're working on developing some apps or some API styles, I really like the command line processes where you simply call the program with an input file and an output file, maybe another parameter and then it spits out the information, there's no GUI. Uh, it's very, very um, applicable for uh, larger scale, high volume production processes, but some folks need GUIs. Uh, you need some sort of user screen, that's fine too. 
but I, I really like the the, uh, the API style apps for best practices. Uh, I'm going to cover this one transaction here in the hopes that um, maybe someone else will get some ideas uh, for developing or even using these apps. Notice here that I created this, um, I call it a ladder chart. Now this is the user interface screen, but I've actually listed the record tag or record label on each of the lines. And you can see here that they correspond with the actual data file. Now this is a flat file uh, that I would expect a, a technical vendor or payer to pass this application so that they could have production style prior uh, prior auth transactions using this app. So you can see top and the record is there, PRY and the record is there and so on and so forth, HOS, PHY, so all they're all in order and they're all there. And if you look at the actual screen, you can see that you know your sender qualifier and ID are listed here. Same way with your receiver qualifier and receiver ID are here. And you can see the interchange control number and your test parameter. And the same is true with you know the other records. And you know I've got you know maybe a, you know 10 to 12 records here. And with those fields, you could create uh, your actual prior auth. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, this particular application um, also runs at the command line. So you can simply um, call this from the command line with the name of the input file. And your input file would be this guy right here. And uh, when you create it, and I'll just create one just like right there, it created the prior auth just that fast. Uh, again, if this was at the um, command line, you wouldn't see uh, this sort of interface. It would just create the file and then close. And I think that's probably a great idea for prior, uh, well, for, for any sort of production style. So if you folks have any comments or questions, let me know. Again, this was something that, that was kind of quick that I put together. Uh, it, it is for sale at a very modest price if any of your pairs are interested uh, in using that. Um, also, if you have any questions, you can email the questions to edi.dallas at zoho.com or you can just leave a, a comment down below. Um, thanks for watching my video and I hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks. Nice.